The Louisville Cardinals are next on the docket here. And Louisville, last year, uh, not great. Six and seven. They lost their bowl game. Scott Satterfield, of course, going into what appears to be a hot seat kind of season. Obviously, recruiting is changing that because they have hit on some big-time recruits heading into the 2023 season. But for now, those guys ain't coming in to help this bunch. What they do have here is Malik Cunningham coming back. That's certainly going to help, right? This team went 6-7 and seven last year, but their post-game win expectancy was 8.74 and 3.26. So they were closer to a 9-3 and three team in the regular season as opposed to a 6-6 six and six team. They just got really unlucky on some of those one-score games. They were 2-4 and four in those. Uh, when you look at this team, you know, number 41 in PPA margin, they were number 20 PPA per drive on offense, number 89 on defense. And yeah, if you don't have a defense, obviously it's going to hurt you. Their returning production is number 29 in the country, 73% coming back. The offense brings back the majority of that at 77%. Defense, 69%. It's okay. It's number 40. Uh, the roster strength here is really, really good, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We know that this team can move the football. When you look at it, uh, the offense coordinator was split between five assistants in 2021. They did hire Notre Dame's run game coordinator, Lance Taylor, as their offensive coordinator. Uh, the quarterback, Malik Cunningham, he's he's a one-man show. He's absolutely phenomenal. If you have not watched him, you need to make sure that you do this season. There's no guarantee that he'll even see the field in the NFL, but he is a phenomenal, phenomenal college quarterback. Felt like he did everything. Uh, this team was number 20 in PPA per drive, number 25 in points per play. They were number 55 in offensive success rate, though, which is not great. They were just explosive. They were number seven in explosive rate. Uh, you got four offensive line starters back. If you can get the running game going, then you should be pretty good, and I think they've got a good chance of doing that. They brought in Tennessee transfer running back at Tyon Evans. Uh, the number 74 rushing success rate is not good enough. You can't hold on to the ball that way. Uh, a lot of their running game last year kind of revolved around Cunningham being able to do things with his feet, right? I think this season they're going to need a little bit more than that to be good. On defense, they hired Florida secondary coach Wes McGriff as their co-defense coordinator to go along with Brian Brown, who's been there since 2018. Uh, this is this team was not good on defense last year. Number 89 PPA per drive defense, number 86 rushing success rate allowed. That's not good. Uh, but the passing success rate was number 46. I mean, that's okay, okay. Uh, number 89 PPA per drive, number 82 points per play, number 101 points per scoring opportunity. They need a fresh voice. They need to get somebody in there that will convince them that they can make stops, right? That's, I think, the biggest thing here. They brought in eight defensive transfers. They brought six of them into the secondary alone. And, you know, linebacker uh, Abdullah is the leader here. Yeah, you got to look for Ashton uh, Gillett to throw uh, to grow in his second season on the defensive line, along with Diaby. You got to get stops this year. I, I don't know what other way to say it. They're projected favorites in nine games but nine of the games on the schedule are toss-ups. Again, that is games that are projected to be within eight points. They went two and four in one-score games, as I mentioned before. Post-game win expectancy said that they should have been nine nine wins. Um, if you want to know what happened, I mean, just look, turnover margin, number 53. Penalties per game, number 73. You need to improve both of those. Uh, if you're not going to be super aggressive on defense, number 73 is not where you want to be as far as penalties per game. And the turnover margin, I mean, you just got to be a little bit better. You just got to, you can't beat yourself. A lot of mistakes in those games that they ended up losing very close. Uh, it's not as easy as just winning the close games. The defense has to get stops. You got to stop teams. They gave up 4.36 yards per rush last year. This number 83 in the country. They were number 61 in opponent third down percentage. That needs to be a little bit better. Uh, it has... Maybe this is not a make-or-break season for Satterfield because of the recruiting wins that they've had. He's made all the right off-season moves, but when you get on the field, if they go through the same thing that they did last year, if they're not 6-6, six and six, if they go 5-7, and seven, what is going to happen? That's what I want to know. Because I, I think that this team could be really good, but I worry. And obviously, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I do like Malik Cunningham, but I just I have to wonder what the boosters will will say what they will do if they're not winning games actually on the field, right? 
this team is pretty good. They're good enough to win a lot of games. Um, I mean, I've got them at eight and four. Like their win total is six and a half. I think they're going to be better than last year. I trust Scott Satterfield as a coach. I loved what he did at App State, but I also, uh, I'm not sure because I haven't seen it really at Louisville yet, and and I want to see what he does. So eight and four. I've got losses to Florida State, uh, Wake Forest, Clemson, and Kentucky. I've got a win over NC State in here, a win over Pitt, wins over Virginia, Boston College, uh, UCF, Syracuse, etc. It's a, a tricky schedule with a, a weird road schedule for sure. But they got six road games, so it, it could be tricky. But I, I think they can win. I think they can win eight games. I like eight and four here for uh, for Louisville. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.